Oh, I just realized I had a really good editing idea for hosting for last episode that I didn't do because I was too amazed it was 40 minutes long. <laughs> Uh, That's more like, instead of really yeah, you can do it this time. No, me, me, me when, me when, me yeah, when you're, you're, you're me, 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 me when uh, you're, do it, do it, do it, make guitar noises. I'm doing it without even trying now. This chair just really sank the second I said, hey, yeah, press play, third episode. Yeah, uh, exciting. Exciting. I'm, I'm excited. I'm worn out. I'm tired. It's, it was, it's been a long episode. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Hey, guess what you did? Oh. You, you, you talked about me? comics. Oh, no. that's right. Yeah, I did. you did. Yeah. You yeah. Talked. And we should, we should, we should do, we should go into we your segment. We should you know? absolutely we, we should, do we that. Should, me when, me when I want, me when I want, me when I want to go. Go 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 Dude, go to your comics. segment. Let's, Let's go to the it. segment. Hello, comic fans out there. This is Press Play's Comic Talk, the segment where we break down all of the biggest superhero movie or TV news, or just whatever I want to talk about. I'm the host now, and I can do whatever I want. I'm Noah, your host, the guy you've probably seen on the show before, just kind of there. But let's just get into the news because this was a pretty big month for comic nerds. The Super Bowl is this month and obviously I didn't watch it. And I know nothing about a sport ball or whatever it's called. But I did watch the new trailers and we did get some good ones. The biggest was the second trailer for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Possibly Marvel's biggest movie this year. And this trailer showed that it had it all. Scarlet Witch being a badass and maybe a bad guy. Mm -hmm. We saw weird cosmic multiverse shit like a zombie Doctor Strange and a green cow man. But the biggest part was the confirmation of the Illuminati. No, not that one. They're basically the protectors of the multiverse with some of the biggest Marvel heroes being its members like Iron Man and Black Panther. But if that wasn't enough, they just casually confirmed that Professor freaking X played by Patrick Stewart from the X-Men movies will be in the Illuminati. So yeah, that should be a hint at how many cameos there are gonna be. Rumors have spread that Hugh Jackman as Wolverine will come back or that Tom Cruise will play a variant Doctor Strange from another universe. Either way, stay tuned to see just how much buzz this movie is gonna get. There are also new looks at Moon Knight, Marvel's newest show on Disney Plus, following Moon Knight, a hero suffering from disassociative identity disorder cursed by the Egyptian moon god Khonshu. And just as you expected, this show looks like it will get weird. New clips showed Moon Knight in action, beating the shit out of a werewolf, and the villain Arthur Harrow, who is a cult leader with magic powers. And if that doesn't excite you, tune in to watch the series premiere on Disney Plus on March 30th. But Marvel weren't the only studio that put out a trailer. DC gave a showcase showing all their movies premiering in 2022, including The Batman, The Flash, Aquaman 2 and Black Adam starring The Rock. All look very cool and gave us some pretty cool moments, so stay tuned for more news on all of these upcoming movies. Now, we've talked about Marvel a lot already, but there's still more news from them. If you're a fan of the Marvel series on Netflix, except Iron Fist, because you people don't exist, Netflix is taking all of their Marvel shows like critically acclaimed series Daredevil and Jessica Jones off their platform by March 1st. Now this comes as a surprise for many fans since all of the shows were Netflix exclusive and were all received pretty well, except Iron Fist. Nobody liked Iron Fist. These shows have actually been confirmed to be on Disney Plus, but not in the US. So either get a good VPN passport or parents permission because these shows are a little too mature to have on Disney Plus, at least in America. In my opinion, these series are still canon because just recently, and uh, spoilers, spoilers ahead, we got Matt Murdock in Spider-Man No Way Home and Kingpin in the Hawkeye series, both played by the same actors from the Netflix series. So let's just hope that that will happen and Marvel accepts these shows as canon to the MCU. Because I don't know about you, but the Daredevil series is fantastic. I would love to keep these versions of the characters in the MCU. 
except Iron Fist. Nobody wants you, Iron Fist. Now that about wraps it up on Comic Talk. I hope that I just made you a little happy comic nerd inside like it did for me. So please stay tuned for the next time on Press Play's Comic Talk for your comic movie or TV news. Please? I really need a place to vent all of my passions to you great folk out there. I'm Noah. See you all later on Press Play's Comic Talk. great segment and I'm, and everyone celebrated by doing works of I art know. Talk, you know? talking about comics it just gets me all jazzed i got a shred you know jazz but let that's rock that, guitars let all that energy up yeah but i mean that was we are a group of artists yeah and you know what else is art netflix tall girl yeah netflix tall girl i, yeah. I talk about that Noah. yeah i talk about i, I do that that we did a segment i right i got, was got short girl got, got uh, steve Steeg, that's his name? That's the guy's name. Well, well I mean. D don't ask me how I know that. No, but I, I think it's because someone in the audience said his name. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I watched a movie. Maybe everyone out there should watch the movie. I totally We should get to that movie. review. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Go. What? As a six foot tall man, I will never understand what it's like to be a Netflix tall girl. I am sorry, Netflix. I will do better. The only thing Netflix's tall girl and I have in common is the fact that we both wear size 13 shoes. In men's? Yeah, that's right. I wear a size 13 shoe, and you know what they say about big feet. Big movie opinions, so let's jump right into my thoughts on Netflix tall girl series. What I don't understand about tall girl is why the hell is everyone so short? Maybe it's just a Pennsylvanian thing, but I know all the homies here are tall AF. Like to put it, put this into perspective, I am only one inch shorter than Netflix tall girl. Does that mean I'm short? I have no clue, and it makes my fragile manhood shatter at the fact that I just might be a short king. Everyone in that movie is also like 5'4", or something like that, and they make tall girl look taller, except for the Swedish guy that is the potential love interest for tall girl. Swedish guy ends up not dating her though. I don't remember why. I think it's because the whole school thought Swedish guy was hot, which I would completely agree with. Swedish guy is a hunky fellow. By the end of the first movie, the short simp king ends up winning tall girl over and they kiss? Kissing? Ew, gross, not in my Netflix teen rom-com. I'm also pretty sure they started dating too. Hey, that's a win for short kings out there. Good for you guys, I'm so proud of you all. I'm also pretty sure the short simp boy is like 5'8", which is average male height. So he's not really short, more like average. Just like this movie review. I wish I could talk about the second film in this anthology, however, I don't remember it. All I know is there was a, like a love octagon or something because there was a lot more kissing and a lot more cheating on significant others. Whatever happened to staying loyal to your significant other? Kids these days, man. I blame Netflix for creating all of these movies that have cheating in them and then go, LOL, that could be you guys. I've been cheated on before, Netflix. That sh hurts. Also, if you could not tell, I have no idea what the names of these characters are. We have Tall Girl, her sister, Swedish Boy, his sister, Short King, the one friend character, the dad from Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and that one lady from The Office. Does the fact that I don't know the names of these characters matter? Not really, because I feel as though their names should be based on their actions. In the one scene in the second movie, Tall Girl literally roundhouse kicks a stage extra because she is too tall. At that point in the movie, I kind of wish I was the stage extra. I don't hate the movies, like they're fun to watch under the influence of a cold can of corn and Reese's Puffs without the milk. However, I would not watch these movies for fun. Everything about the movie is forgettable and I'm surprised Netflix even gave us a second movie. That being said, Netflix, give us a third movie. Do it, you won't. I'll watch the third movie like the short king I am. Make Tall Girl a trilogy. I wanna meet more of the Swedish family. I wanna see people cheat on other people. Please, Netflix, do it. What did you guys think of Tall Girl? The two of you, what did, what did you guys think of Tall Girl? Is it, a, is it a bad movie? Because I have no idea. I didn't watch any of these movies. I just wrote this script for content content Are you sake. Sure about that? Um, if anyone wants to watch Tall Girl with me, I am willing to watch Tall Girl with me. Or with you. No. Okay. Well, 
let's just go back to hosting, I guess, while I cry the fact that no one wants to watch Tall Girl with me. Peace. Tall Girl, Tall Girl, Tall Girl. Tall girl. Oh man, that was a great review. Tall Girl's rad, isn't it? She is rad, and yeah. I feel like she has so many problems in she, her life. She's and I tall, feel bad. she's got size 13 Nikes. She's, she's taller than me. Oh, damn. Was it, that it, is a real problem. Do you remember the trailer when that came out? I, I do not. It was years ago, man. And I mean, yeah, I mean, there got a lot of talk. The trailer, I think, I don't remember. Yeah. But you know what? You know what we did? We did. We talked about a couple. We, we watched oh, a couple we'll movie trailers. trailers. Oh, the, the really bad image. We talked about movie trailers, and we, know, we, yeah. we we watched. We were like, should we watch them or should we not watch them? Right. And. We should absolutely watch Tall Girl and absolutely watch this next segment. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, let's yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. Tall girl, tall girl, tall girl, tall girl, tall girl, tall girl. I guess I can intro. Hello, or? Press Play. Welcome to Watch or Not. We're going to be watching three different trailers for movies, and we're going to be saying whether or not we think we want to watch the movie. Um, I'm Justin. What's up? I'm Josh. I'm Jeff. I'm also on this camera too. Hi. Anyway, let's react to that first trailer. There are some would make me. There's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hand. I'm sorry, real quick. What number Elvis movie is this? Hmm? It's a very interesting choice of music here. I'm going to be perfectly honest, I didn't expect I didn't expect any less from a Baz Luhrmann trailer. I mean, he's such a such a bizarre director and has such a such a distinct visual style that like I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing that style of movie you know the the you know biopic of you know some uh, of you know famous rock musician that we've seen a, a few of recently honestly uh, you know? he's one of those yeah. few people who just keep getting documentaries and well biopics yeah uh, over and over and over again yeah, yeah. Um, Though, I, uh, I, yeah. uh, help me out here. Who's Baz Luhrmann? Uh, Baz Luhrmann directed uh, Romeo plus Juliet, that oh, yeah, weird sort of that. modern adaptation mm -hmm. of Romeo and Juliet, but it still had like the original dialogue. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, he did uh, Moulin Rouge. Uh, he did. Uh, uh, okay, you see, here's the problem here. Uh, those are, sound like a whole bunch of dramas and romance movies. <laughs> yeah. I don't really watch those, so I fair I, enough. I, I don't. Um, yeah, Romeo and Juliet was such a weird movie because it had like Juliet, it, had, so it was like modernized kind of like it had cars and guns and stuff. It was like a huge action movie, but but it like, keeps the original dialogue. They you know it, <laughs> in the opening scene. Uh, I think it's Lord Montague goes, fetch me my longsword, and pulls a shotgun out of the roof <laughs> of a car. Well, I don't think it's really any secret that you, you, you'll you, most likely watch this movie. Huh? Oh, yeah, most likely, yeah. This, this movie seems very interesting. I'm at the very least going to check out reviews after it comes out, because I know sometimes these movies can be hit or miss, but, like, I'm looking forward to it. There's There's been, like, biopics in the past that have been very successful, mm -hmm. like the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody one about Freddie Mercury, that one yep. was really good. So I, I'm hoping this is yeah. gonna be on the same tier as this, of that movie, so. Hopefully the editing's better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never been big in these types of movies, especially like biopics, so not really something I'm into. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really big into biopics, like, um, like Bohemian Rhapsody, you mentioned Rocket Man. Um, there's like the Doors movie too in the past that came out in the 90s. Um, I just really like biopic movies and I think it's a really unique way of uh, going through the documentary as if you're like that person living through that life. So I'm, of course it's a watch for me. I'm outnumbered, darn. <laughs> well, our next trailer. Uh, uh, next one, our, or our flag means dead. Yep. I haven't heard of.
the ball. Instead of killing with weapons, he kills with kindness. I got bad news for you, genital pirate. <laughs> <laughs> This trailer was really interesting to me. Um, uh, I remember in, uh, I believe it was fifth grade, I did a project on uh, Blackbeard and like we, I like dressed up as him and everything else. And uh, it, I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, Blackbeard portrayed in a somewhat sympathetic light. Um, well, this is obviously more of a comedic take on the whole uh, pirate genre. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. In which, in all honesty, I haven't seen much of. So I will, it'll be something a little different. I will point out yeah. Blackbeard's beard wasn't black. It, it was like grayish. It was like, gray. like grayish, mm -hmm. yeah. But why was that? That's his thing. Like that. Blackbeard, yeah. It, he, yeah. The, the beard is black. But I, it's it's clearly a lot of. of that's uh, his entire yeah. bit. What, what is going on? Anyways, but like, I think they're going more towards the, um, more towards the juxtaposition of the whole like pirate shtick. <laughs> Basically, even from how they uh, wear the, like, even how the main pirate, like, wears his clothes, like, he wears, like, very bright and, like, light colors, and everyone else just wears very dark and just has more of a sinister behavior, basically, so. I, I think it's yeah. going to be interesting. It's yeah. not reinventing, it, it's not making anything new. Pretty sure it's just reinventing the wheel here, but, uh, you know, uh, it could be successful. could be interesting to see. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think that this seems like a very interesting, for lack of a better term, fish out of water story um, that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, no matter what direction they take it, it just seems like a fun story to tell. Oh, this story, this show is definitely anything but historically accurate. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, if you're looking for anything like that, um, maybe <laughs> not watch the show. But yeah, yeah that's, that's a watch, watch for me. I mean, it's something that I, my, I could see myself watching at some point, though I don't think I'd go out of my way to watch it, you know? Fair enough. I think I'm around. Yeah, the um, I think it's something that I could watch. I, I don't think it's something that I'm, like, really excited about, but I think it's something that I could watch further down the line, basically. There you go. Now, what should we name you? It's like the CGI looks like something that came out in like 2007. It kind of looks like CGI you see in a, like a mobile game. Yeah. Or oh, like, ah, what is that? No. The heck? Yeah, this, uh, this, this animation is very simplistic. I mean, at least they're taking a different take on the Pinocchio story. No. This doesn't... I don't like how it looks, I can tell you that much. Because Pinocchio's not the only person who looks wood in here. What is it? No. I sense that you're taking great insult at this trailer, Justin. I'm... I'm horrified. What the heck? John Heater. I promise to look at him at all times. And Tom Kenny. I just need you. Oh, he's one Tom Kenny. What? You'll be a star someday, no doubt. That's actually pretty impressive on Tom Kenny's part, but. I need a talking puppet. Oh my god. Won't soon forget. Pinocchio, a true story. Gotcha. You've only seen my good side. Huh. Can I delete a movie? Just, just can I just like remove that? Just. I just wish I could take that existence. out of my memory. Yeah, that really didn't need I, to be a was, thing. Uh, it's I, called voice acting, not just speaking. I what? Uh, the, I. Uh, I I've never seen I. 
I, I watched Cats 2019, and I still don't think I've seen a trailer that shows a movie failing on every step of I the process. I get kind of more like a Nomeo and Juliet vibes yeah, from but that, that movie. Had like, but I mean, this this one is that just had like, like, so Like bad. the animation for that, I don't know, the animation for me is, is what's getting me. It looks like... I don't know. I don't want to say early two thousands. Like like those those classic Absolutely, like yeah. B, those classic animated three D animated B movies that you often see. <laughs> real real talk. Look, know your value, man. Know your own value, because like this is this is beneath you. Uh, this I mean it has it's, it has some charm because like it's a different take of the Pinocchio story, which I can respect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, rather than just rehashing the same story that has been rehashed about a dozen times now. It's not a stretch to say that uh, uh, it's a it's a strong no from just about everyone here. Yeah, it's it's Kay. like the Hoodwink sequel, but with none of the charm or ironic enjoyment. Well, I like That's Hoodwink a though. Strong pass. Oh yeah, Hoodwink is fun. It's not mm -hmm. a great looking movie, but no. it's very very fun. This movie had none of the things that make Hoodwink any in any way fun. Yeah. I, the, hard pass. Or even Shrek. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah. But yeah. Uh, hard pass for me too. Yep. I mean, even if I was a kid, I wouldn't even want to watch this movie. Oh, uh, they're going to keep doing that until I say something. <laughs> I did realize. They really complained about Pinocchio there. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to complain about, they got, understandably. I don't know why. The Pinocchio's got the whole world to see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 girlfriend was all. <laughs> Speaking of complaints, <laughs> yeah. uh, did Johnny Jerkface? Uh, he he, he, complained he about sure did complain. He did all about that about Call of Duty. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I, I, I was laughing at my joke, but now I just can't stop laughing. Let's let's see time. what uh, yeah. let's, let's see what Johnny Jerkface talked about. That, that Jerkface, go me. Welcome back to Complaining About Nothing. I'm your host, Dark Face Johnny. We're gonna complain about Call of Duty tonight. Many people have been complaining about everything in the new Call of Duty Vanguard because the custom guns look as historically accurate as watching a Civil War movie and seeing laser weapons in every hand of every soldier. The gun looks like they were all fused and ironed out by my drunk Polish uncle who believes that French ghosts are hunting him. I don't know why they're French. Anyways, this episode will not be about Call of Duty Vanguard's sins of inbred guns, trash multiplayer, and irrational zombies. And that Russian chick. We will instead be talking about the past COD sins. These crimes against humanity started as early as Black Ops 2 and continue now. <clears throat> yeah. Activision has been beating us like And in this episode, we are going, going to go through many of these sins of, of Activision. Now, some of your basement dwelling suckers are probably wondering why I said Activision started to bully us at Black Ops 2. You're probably thinking, Black Ops 2 was great. What's wrong with Black Ops 2? The answer is not much except transit. Yeah, I'm bringing back the bad memories. For those who have not suffered the original release of BO2, there was only one map, kind of. Transit, or as the kids all called it back then, trans or as the script says, chan What's so bad about trans shit, you may ask? Wow, that's like asking what's wrong with a nuclear war. Transit is one big map where you travel from one location to another, to another. The ground can kill you. How's that fair at all? It's not, because you gotta be jumping and moving around to avoid the llama, llamas and the lava and the zombies at the same time. It's like trying to run over someone with a car. 
and respecting the speed limit at the same time. If you miss the bus, you have to run from one of the locations yourself. And there are these little green gremlin monsters that jump at you and scratch at you. So you should get on the bus because mama's not taking you to school. Speaking of zombies, we get two new ones, Denzins and Avadrados. The Zenzin is a little creature that attack you when you're walking between locations. <sighs> then there's the Uvo Drago or whatever it's called. Ugh. The Uvo Drago will spawn when you activate the power switch. They cannot be killed by anything but melee attacks or EMP grenades only when they're in their humanoid form. And it can zap and stop the already bus. Those things are incompatible. How am I supposed to figure things out? I'm getting confused by this stupid script. Oh, when I'm being attacked by the electric Slenderman with an EMP grenade. Oh, I've been killing zombies with my gun and I just assume I can kill the Avo Dravo with anything, like anything. I didn't even think to use my brain. I don't think I have a brain. I never had before, why should I? I'm an American. Activision for making me think, think, you, Activision. What else did Activision take a chainsaw to? Oh yeah, you need to get a thing to activate the power punch machine. And this map has one of the worst create your own wonder weapons. They break every second. The jet gun, it is such a pain to make and get, and I don't even want to discuss it or I'm gonna break another one of my grandmother's computers. Because of you, Hectivision, you destroy lives. You made me break grandma's computer. You are the one who made me drive a Honda into a pub. And I'm not even, I have not even got to ghosts. And I'm already wanting to start a riot. For the safety of everyone in the studio, I'm gonna skip Call of Duty Ghosts for another episode. BO3 was the third Black Ops game. And just like the other threequels, it sucks. But this third one sucks. The story makes no sense. It is like the writers were on something. It's futuristic for some reason, and you get superpowers. You get scary dreams that make no sense. I don't wanna talk about this anymore because it's stupid. And I would say that they had a good idea, but I think the only good idea the writers could have done was to burn the script for the game. <sighs> the story goes something like new world is ending. There's new technology. There's a second cold war. You play as John Taylor, he gets nightmares and stuff. If you want to suffer someday, play the story of this game. It has been proven by scientists to cause heart heartburns and pink eye. And I can't read the rest of the script. Goodbye, folks. We're running out of time. Bye. I'm Jerkface Johnny. Screw you all. Goodbye. Cheers, we're good. Wow, Pinocchio. That's Pinocchio. Oh my god, guys, wrong segment. That's great. Okay, you guys can stop saying it, Pinocchio. Oh man. Wow, complaining about nothing. Uh Vanguard. Uh speaking of Vanguard. You ready for this? Vanguard, what's with the guitar? Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, I'm just, just keeping it here because we're talking about Guitar Hero. And Gage oh. has a lot to say about Guitar Hero. Uh, so let's just jump right into that. Yeah. Pinocchio! 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 Well, depending on the order of this episode, you may have seen us just play some Guitar Hero. I want to tell you folks that as soon as I picked up that plastic, too small to be real controller, I was taken back. Back to the past. In 1995, two programmers with a passion for games and music made Harmonix, a small game dev group. After receiving investments totaling 100,000, they promptly didn't make any money for five years. I mean, they made a game called The Axe, a joystick rhythm game that sold a whopping 300 copies. 
Uh, however, Disney, of all companies, thought this was impressive enough to offer them a contract making amusement park rhythm attractions. Then they went on to make some pretty cool stuff like Frequency and its sequel Amplitude, which were well received, but they just didn't make a lot of money. That's whenever they found out that America was hungry, hungry for rock and roll. In 2005, after partnering with peripheral developer Red Octane, they created Guitar Hero. Side note, Red Octane was really the secret sauce in this whole endeavor. While Harmonix could create interesting looking games and fun mechanics, the PlayStation controller just wasn't up to the task of an intense rhythm game. Red Octane made the Gibson SG, the first guitar peripheral for the game series. Without this controller, I feel like the game would lack a lot of what made it actually interesting and engaging. I just remember being a kid around six or seven, walking into Best Buy while my dad got printer ink or some other equally useless thing and coming across the demo. There it was, a shiny guitar controller blaring rock music. Without the controller peripheral, it would have just been another demo. I'd fail out a few times before having to leave, less interested than I was before. But this time, it was different. I was the rock star. I remember I was complete ass at the game, so I set it to co-op play, which meant that I couldn't fail. I'd run through songs probably hitting three or four notes before just making a complete buffoon out of myself, but I knew I had to get better. We didn't quite have a lot of money that year, but in 2006, Guitar Hero 2 came out, and sure enough, it was under the Christmas tree. The only problem being, I was still ass at the game. I remember being on the verge of literal tears while my older brother and my dad, of all people, would crush me on every song. I mean, come on, they were supposed to only beat me at Madden. But I stuck around after they were done and slipped into practice mode, and you best believe I beat the campaign after probably six or seven months of trying, which is way too long. I remember at the time I would spend half the week at my mom's and then half at my dad's who had the PS2, where we had Guitar Hero. I just couldn't wait to get back there to shred some tunes. If I thought it was good then, I moved on up to medium difficulty. Instead of three notes, you'd use four, count them, four notes, and sure enough, I got to where the game ended last time, and holy smokes, call me a blue-nosed golfer, there were an entirely new set list for those brave enough to beat the game on medium. A new location, Stonehenge. It blew my mind. Eventually, I'd move on to hard mode, but not before Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock release. This one was different. From the weirdly textured graphics that, I'll be honest, I didn't dig compared to the smooth stylization of the first two games, to the new characters and better reaction times, the game was generally just better. Many regard Legends of Rock to be the pinnacle of Guitar Hero's popularity. There's still arcade cabinets everywhere for this thing. People marveled at the seemingly impossible through the fire and the flames. Some kid went on Oprah because he could play it pretty good. Well, like the castle of Camelot, it couldn't last forever. There was a new kid on the block and he wasn't fucking around. I mean, look at this trailer. You could play guitar, but also drums and sing. This was rock band and they were the Sega to Guitar Heroes Nintendo. I'll be transparent. I never really got to play Rock Band seriously. I just know that I preferred the Red Octane controllers and more stylized looks of Guitar Hero. That being said, I know it was a good game. Guitar Hero tried to recover, but alas, DJ Hero wasn't the epic comeback they thought it would be. So they tried the whole band together thing too with World Tour. World Tour is, in my opinion, a classic. It's great songs, fun charts, but the in-game graphics were not the best. It was the after party from Legends of Rock. It continued the tradition of a final bonus song that was ludicrous to play. And from then on, things got really silly. Guitar Hero Aerosmith, I mean, who can name more than two Aerosmith songs? Guitar Hero Decades, Guitar Hero couldn't keep up with Rock Band, their star in the Ascendant. But by the time Warriors of Rock came out, both franchises were doing poorly. They'd make a few attempts at comebacks, but nothing could really compare to what once was. But people still had an itch. There was a dedicated fan base, and they modded songs into the games until eventually, someone made a PC editor to make charts and play them. Thus, Clone Hero was born, with more complicated charts than ever, infinite accessibility, and the best features of every game. 
To this day, there are huge communities that release monthly song packs. It isn't going away anytime soon, and in fact, with the emergence of more recent rhythm games, I kind of think it's here to stay. Guitar Hero wasn't the first of its kind, but it was the first to be truly famous. It had its imitators, some of whom were just better at times, but the impact will stay forever. It's a core memory now for me, just as it is for many people my age. I would say that I hope they return, but I don't think anything can come close to Clone Hero. The king is dead. Long live the king. Rock on. That's it. That's where we're cutting it. Yep. Hey, that... Hey, that review was pretty great, huh? 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 The, the review, the, the guitar review. Uh, yeah, that was a banger. Good job, yeah. Gage. I, I love you, Gage. Um, we all do. Although we, we it's, it's about that time of, of the, the show uh, again. Where yeah, we go. We, we got to say goodbye. All right. So, uh, goodbye. Check out our, our socials. YouTube. YouTube Instagram. Instagram uh, Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, Twitter. Maybe. No Facebook. That's outdated. Yeah, uh, that's, that's for the boomers. So yeah, check us out. It's all press play IUP TV. It's crazy. It's nuts, I guess. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you next week, press, uh, press play fans. Uh, IUP, goodbye. Bye. Bye. This is. Bye. Oh, Start coming and they don't stop coming. There's a road and there's a ground running. It makes sense of the live for fun. Shrek, 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 Shrek. Ah!